Well, I finally have a video I can just throw up right on the internet there. So, I just picked this guy up last Thursday. Today is, what, Friday, so I've already had it a week. And, uh, 2019, or December of 18, uh, Polaris 850 SP says HO for high output, but, you know, whether that's marketing or whatever, I don't know. Picked it up with like two miles, or like a one point something mile on it, all of 0.4 hours. And now it's got 130 miles, and I don't know, eight, nine hours on the engine, something. But definitely been working it in. Took it up to, uh, first ride was the Sioux Line in Isle, uh, Minnesota. And there we put on like 32 miles, I want to say. And then from there, uh, let's see, and then Tuesday, uh, you know, it's the 4th of July weekend or week we took off and uh, my uncle's here from Texas. He brought a four-wheeler with him and we went up to uh, Emily Outing. We went, up, we went up to the very northern part of the trail and we rode about 52 miles that day. And then uh, we camped out overnight. And then the next day, we're like, we pretty much rode all the trails. They had two of them closed off because all the rain and stuff. Uh, two of the trails in, at Emily. So we went down back down to Isle. And we rode the Red Top Trails for a second time. And because uh, those ones were a lot more fun than Emily Outing, believe it or not. No, but uh, the most fun at Emily Outing was the logging roads. Those were the most fun. So, I've just put the brush guard on today. That came in. I ordered that the day I got it. And surprisingly, they didn't have that in stock. You know, uh, that's kind of disappointing. Uh, Davis Motorsports in Delano, Minnesota. They had the best deal on this guy. Brand new. And this is the white lightning. I figured I wanted a different color than everybody else. Everybody's got a red one, a, a camel one, a black one, a green one. You know, I wanted something different. Not everybody's got a white one. So, and it's the paint job. It's not just the plastic is white. So, that's why, like, the cup holder, since I've used it quite a bit now, it's, you know, wearing the paint down. But... <clears throat> At some point down the road, you know, five, ten years down the road, I'm sure it'll be a spray paint baby, you know. But uh, for now, you know, she looks good, and and uh, yeah. So I got the brush guard that's from Polaris. I put a KFI winch on it, <clears throat> plug and play winch, uh, and that is in the description in the title there, plug and play. I gotta squeeze by here. Decent switch. It's not as closed off as I thought it would be, and it doesn't uh, come on unless the bat the key is on, which is nice. So, and then <clears throat> I just put this on today. Not that you can see a whole lot here. Uh, the third tail light there. I'll, I'll flip the key on, and we'll be able to see. So, that is also the brake light. So, uh, this is just parking light, and if I manage to set this with one hand, which I don't know. Give me a second here, so I'm going to the camera, both hands, there we go. There we go. That was a plug-and-play option. Um, this isn't the premium edition, because, you know, they want an extra... You know, fifteen hundred dollars for the premium edition. It gives you the front and rear bumpers, brush guard, whatever. The win of uh, factory Polaris winch and the third tail light, and maybe a little bit better paint job. But other than that, there's not much more to the premium edition. And uh, I didn't want the base edition, so I got the the SP, whatever. And uh, electronic power steering. The front suspension softened up quite a bit from from when I first got it. Uh, it was a little bit stiffer than Dad's. 
but his also had 300, 300 miles on it when he got it. But, uh, yeah, I already had to be winched out once uh, via the, the little loop underneath the winch there. I uh, decided to play my chances. Uh, we were at Emily Outing, I believe it was. Yeah. And that, someone had like three different uh, trail kind of things right through this mud water pit thing. And I tried the end two before I went down the middle. And the middle one got me. And that one was deep. I mean, it was buried. I could probably insert a picture if I edited this, but I probably won't. But, I mean, the water was up to here. It was, that's a lot of water. And uh, I couldn't back out of it. Normally, I've been able to back out real easy with what I get myself into. So, these tires have been actually really good. And it's kind of frustrating uh, that they're so good. I, and I don't know anything about tires or anything for... Uh, you know, four-wheelers or nothing, and people are probably going to say, you know, maybe these are junk or something. I don't know. But in my experience, because they're different from what Dad has on his 570, I, can, I can't I can hardly get this thing to drift. As soon as I smash the gas, this thing just catches and goes. It doesn't lollygag and slip and spin, and it, it just it gets traction and goes. And so that's why I've been able to get through most of the stuff that I've gotten through. I mean, I don't... I haven't babied this thing. I've done, haven't done a full throttle yet, but I've gotten pretty close because it's still technically in the break-in period. But uh, my goodness, it's it's definitely it's definitely fun. I wanted something a little bit faster than Dad's 570. I definitely wanted two cylinders. That's that was like a must. I wanted. Uh, I just don't like the one cylinder as much. It's just not as fun. I also wanted the 2019 because I heard that they had reworked the clutch and that it engaged a lot smoother and wasn't just a jerk off the line as soon as you even hint at touching the throttle, which is like what Dad's 18 570, 2018 570 has. And that's exactly what this does. It's it's very smooth. It almost, uh, when you gingerly hit the gas, it's almost like it doesn't want to go. It just kind of revs up and kind of catches the clutch a little bit here and there, but you give it just a hair more gas and she just takes right off so nice and smooth though i'm definitely glad i got the 19 uh dad's 18 570 and uh his buddy's also got the same exact thing as him so two red identical sportsman 570s and my dad's friend had a whole lot more trouble we went to the red top trail of the sioux line and I mean, I'm plowing through water with this thing. I see a puddle, I'm hammering on it. I'm just whoosh, you know, get the wall of water up and all over and everything. You know, I took a bath quite a few times. I, I enjoy doing that, especially on like the 86 degree days, you know, and you'll get so, nice and soaked. And with that wind, it just really keeps you cool. So that really helps. But uh, Dad's buddy's 570, you know, he went through the same stuff I did, not as fast. He just likes to crawl through that stuff. But kept getting water in the belt housing, and he even got water in the intake, and it was just barely, you know, chugging along. So I think he had to drain his uh, belt case out like three times or so, just in that one trail or trip or whatever. And uh, when we went up to Emily Outing, or I think once we went, we had to empty out Dad's once at Emily Outing and once at. Uh, the uh, red top on the Sioux line uh, this this last trip and uh, before that that one I think he had empty his once the last the first time we were ever at Sioux line so um, I haven't had any waterlog issues whatsoever this thing has been reworked so uh, most of the breather tubes not that that's where a lot of water gets in but you can see under here there's a lot, all, most of the breather tubes are up here, and I've been splashing through puddles and stuff, and I ended up having the front diff breather tube drop out, pretty much dragging on the ground, so I had to fish that up. That was royally fun, but uh, I haven't had to drain anything once, and uh, I'll probably upload a video 
a compilation of the three video clips dad got him he just plowing through water i'm not playing around i just i want to get it wet i want to enjoy i want to spin some tires you know and uh so i don't play around the one nice thing about getting mine at delano in delano i should say at davis motorsports is they install a battery tender plug right from as soon as they get it they said so you know if you have a battery tender which we do there's two different plug styles just pull that boot off or whatever and uh, there you go you got yourself a battery tender spot and uh she's ready to ready to rip if i can get that back on there probably not by one hand but uh, i'll probably fire it up here for you you can hear them dual cylinders i think they sound pretty cool uh especially when you're you're getting on it and stuff because she's got a she's got a big hardy muffler on there and she uh sounds pretty freaking sweet so probably run through this stuff before i fire it up though <laughs> teaser so we did 35.9 at the red top i believe and uh this past trip 9.4 engine hours still got 15.6 hours on the brake in yet or whatever uh i've already gone through two tanks worth of fuel uh let's see do do 13 130.7 miles on this guy already it's not bad for a week i suppose but uh was that the one trip that was trip one so that's the odometer and the trip I then I set reset that for the suit top and uh, suit top. My goodness. Anyway, you get the point. But uh, I'm sure y'all have seen the other videos of cycling through all this stuff. There's not nothing a whole lot special. But then you got the winch on this sounds a lot better than the one Dad got from her uh, from Northern Tool. No Menards. But it uh, doesn't sound quite like a dying cat. And that electric power steering, man, it's just light as a feather. But, uh... sounds just like a motorcycle and that's pretty freaking sweet compared to the uh, uh 570 which is just a putt you know almost like a little fart when you start getting onto it so <laughs> and it does its little ticky buzzy thingy when she when you shut her off every time but uh, it's been a good good machine so far i really enjoy it it's pretty peppy uh it's not the flyby wire it's got uh you can hear the butterfly or whatever actuate when I step onto the throttle there. One complaint I do have about the seat, this is softer than Dad's 570, but it does have a problem with bottoming out relatively easy right on the corners. So my, you know, right underneath my butt starts hurting on my legs. That's kind of unfortunate. Now, right now, if you're watching this video today, Polaris, uh, I haven't checked today, but I checked yesterday. Uh, Polaris has a pretty good deal going on with these bags for this this cubby back here, which I wanted to use as a cooler, but Dad didn't think it was going to be insulated enough. But uh, this little bag for the cubby back here is twenty four something. Well, I paid. I think with shipping and tax and everything, I think it was like thirty six bucks 33 bucks something like that so you know it, i think this would really help uh keep the water out this is the for me this is the most waterproof uh spot on the four-wheeler uh i get water up in the front quite a bit yet not horrible not even horrible it's just a bit but the back i don't hardly get anything so if i you know keep my registration and stuff in here and then inside of here i think it's definitely going to be more than waterproof enough to um keep things nice and dry so 
I'm gonna try that out and uh, but I figure they got it on clearance for $24 plus your shipping tax whatever and that I mean that's a screaming deal because otherwise it's like 56 bucks or something like 59 bucks so screaming deal there and of course with uh, having just bought this guy they gave me 10% on the brush guard and I asked them about the third tail I just picked up today and uh, I ordered that I drove all the way to East Bethel for that rear third tail light because they had that in stock. Um, so, but they did not give me the 10% on that. And that was, out the door was 96 bucks. And on Amazon, you can get, I don't know if it's Prime actually, but uh, it was about 96 bucks on there as well. Uh, with this, It says it includes shipping, I, so I don't think it's a Prime item. So, but whatever you know and the thing goes right on and it was really weird how it goes on too this will probably be the last thing of the video if you're wondering but uh it, these studs came like smooth and it's just got hollow aluminum nuts that spin on here oh they're a 13 millimeter and uh yeah this is what was on there you know yeah. so yeah you just take them nuts off which this one on the 850, I don't know about the 1000, is because you got to take this whole thing off. There's 12 bolts, you know, this one, that one, the three. And then if you've got these ones on there, obviously, I think that one, those have to come off as well. And then the same here, and then there's two on the inside, you know, right there and right there. Oops. So. But, uh, yeah, this one's just behind the heat shield, and it's like you can get like those fingers, and that's about it. So it, it's a turd, but uh, I just had to, do it. I had to get it done. I just wanted an extra premium look to it uh, without paying extra premium. So um, the winch was about 4, 430, no, 4, about 480, I think, with uh, tax. And uh, it had free shipping, and that was straight from KFI. Came in one day because I'm there in Minnesota. I'm in Minnesota, so one day shipping. Uh, got that right on there, plug and play. And then the winch was two fifty something with tax because of the ten percent. And uh, then you got ninety six bucks for this third tail light, about thirty six bucks for the bag, and uh, well, I mean we're we're into it a whole lot less than what we would be i'm i'm debating on the on the rear bumper i'm not such a fan of it yet the idea um because it's already got a bumper from the factory kind of and this sucker already <laughs> dad bumped into me pretty good and it just put a little ding into it so it's a pretty stout little bumper from the factory which his 570 doesn't have so that's an added bonus and it, it's already helped out from smashing the plastics but i don't know i suppose it does come in handy because you know i was like i won't ever need that but i was backing up in the woods on the trails and stuff you know turning around this that the other and you're like yeah i could see where you might back into a tree on accident or something so yeah i don't know i'm thinking about it but they're still pretty freaking expensive you know three three hundred dollars for such a small chunk of metal compared to you know like eight hundred dollars oh, i got it closed up eight hundred dollars for a full you know truck brush guard type thing you know stainless steel um just thinking about rack extensions haven't gone that route uh because we've got this cooler back here on the floor by the steering wheel it's a pretty big cooler um uh, we just picked that up at fleet farm uh and that we had strapped down here we had to take off the rear the rear rack things which are really nice i hate i didn't want to have to take them off but you know otherwise the cooler was sitting like here and it just is you know i sit back here so it wasn't gonna work and with it pushed back as far as it'll go uh and tied down it's a really nice backrest when you come up to a stop and stuff so other than that i have no complaints with the machine it hasn't been waterlogged or nothing and i i mean i bury this sucker so um definitely happy with the way it performs it sounds a whole lot different than your typical four-wheeler when you you know get out on the trails and everybody's got a 570 you're like yeah i stand out yeah you know everybody says it sounds mean i haven't 
I don't really pay attention a whole lot when you're out there just whipping through the trails. So anyway, 20 minute video about my Polaris 850 2019, and I uh, hope this gives you a quick little overview insight. Uh, the one other thing too, Dad's 570 doesn't have these wheel well guards or anything. These are really nice to help keep mud out and whatnot. And uh, I guess I'll show you because it is kind of a cool perk of the 850 and 1000s. Uh, this redesign or whatever you want to call it. Is the easy access you have to everything underneath this. Which I gotta do one handed with a corked oil in there. Oh. Your battery is right on top. Super easy to get to. Your coolant's up here. Uh, your brake fluid, I believe, is underneath the seat, which is a really weird spot for that, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, you just pop that back in, tighten her back down, nice and easy. And that gets in the way. That's one thing I've noticed. So that likes to get in the way of that closing all the time. And I really like having this off to the side instead of right under the center like the 570. So, you know, there's just extra little nifty things that uh, redesigns with the, the 850 and 1000s that the 570 hasn't gotten yet. And it's definitely a one-up, if you would. Um, so, But, yeah, I'm definitely happy. No complaints. Uh, I almost broke it. I sounded like I bought in this corner out. Uh, when I upload that video of me romping around, you'll you'll see it and you'll hear it and you'll cringe. It, it made me cringe. I mean, I was kind of paranoid when it happened. I'm like, this thing's brand new and it sounds like I broke it. But uh, now it's fine. Uh, we had it going you know, 50 miles an hour, short, not that long after that. Wheel didn't fall off or nothing, didn't shimmy shake. So must have not done too much. But this does have the the different wheels on it it's a size up from the 570 what they normally get and uh, i saw an 850 on base model with the steel wheels and that's got smaller wheels than this you know and this has got the arched a arms so it gives you the extra clearance plus the bigger tires so that does help quite a bit but we're gonna go out riding tomorrow somewhere somewhere by malax again so tomorrow so that'll be fun but uh yeah I, and that's kind of the thing too i haven't even really had fun yet to me it's uh all about tactical i guess just really plowing through the field or plowing through the trails just just whipping it around trying to i don't know i don't focus on the fun aspect as much as i do on the technical that's just you know how hard can i whip it into a corner and, uh, you know, I'm constantly feeling what the four-wheeler's telling me and, you know, and reading the road. Kind of like magnetic ride shocks, you really read the road, you know. And I kind of do the same thing. I listen to what the vehicle's telling me when I'm doing stuff. And so I'm focusing more on that than I am on having fun. And at the end of the day, and it's just like, you know, I, I don't even really remember the trail. I'm just <laughs> thinking about whipping it through the trail. So I don't know. I gotta figure out how to sw switch my mindset, but no complaints, and uh, hope this helps, and hope you enjoyed quick little overview, 22 minutes, 24 minutes, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and uh, you know, if you have any comments, questions, or uh, anything you'd like to know, if I can help answer anything, you know, just leave a comment, and, and uh, there'll definitely be more videos, so keep an eye out, and uh, Thanks for watching. God bless.